Hello YouTube, so I'm back at my big three again. Um, I haven't done anything on this model for a few months. Uh, I kind of lost interest as I came into... <laughs> um, I found myself in a corner where I had an idea what I would like wanted to do, but I couldn't find a good solution to actually solve it. So I had to just put it aside for, for a while and um, let the ideas just mature in my head, in the back of my head somehow. somehow. Anyway, so I got going again and I, I, I like to, to update you on, on the progress. And of course, if you have any comments, I'm really interested to hear them as well. Right, so in the last post uh, in regard to this Big 3, I showed you my uh, removable tail. And I'm still very happy with that. I haven't flown it yet, of course, because it's... Hello, it's not built yet. Um, but I was stuck on the need to have an, an easy access to the fuselage. And it's, it's inside. As I'm planning to have this as a experimental platform for different... You know techie <laughs> solutions which I could carry on board and that requires you know it, it makes life easier if I have an easy access to the inside of the fuselage um, so gluing it all together was not something I wanted to do so um, uh, I'm, I'm planning to actually keep the fuselage uh, unless at least <laughs> part of the fuselage uh, unglued to the other half so I can split it in half when needed. Well, anyway, so to be able to do that, you know, the, the original server position is up front here for the, tail, uh, for the tail servers. And there is long push rods, metal heavy push rods going all the way back to the, to the, uh, the elevator and the rudder and the steering wheel. So um, to be able to split this in half, I uh, at least for one side I need that I need to do come up with a different solution to um, be able to remove this um, this push rod as it's in the way as well as I do need uh, after some calculations more weight on the on the tail of this aircraft as it's going to be quite uh, nose heavy um, so pushing some weight further back would just be positive for this model and my application of it. Anyway, so what I've done so far, I actually made a decision and moved, <laughs> removed those push rods and moved the servers uh, all the way back to the, to the tail section. Uh, I've seen a, a few people that has done this online and I've been inspired by them. Thank you very much for sharing your, your thoughts and, and, and solutions in forums and so on and so on. So uh, this is me paying back, or pay, pushing it forward, um, sharing my thoughts and, and, and uh, my solutions to similar issues. So with that removable tail, um, that will be like it's glued in, but it's, the, it's attach attachable, so the detachable, sorry. And um, my challenge here was to actually get the push rods to run free uh, to the original uh, horn positions on, on the rudders. Um, and, and this seems to, to do the job actually. Uh, the elevator server here go, runs freely to the elevator, um, elevator, um, elevator horn, sorry, in any position. So that's, that's fine. And I get full um, throw as well on, on, on the on the elevator. Uh, for the rudder and steering the, the, the tail steering wheel, um, that works also with a split push rod uh, as the original has. But I'll just keep the attachment point to this point here. So one will go down to the steering wheel down there, and the other one is going to go above the vertical stabilizer up to the uh, original um, uh, rudder horn. Uh, and that seems also to be working. It should be working quite nice. I haven't put it all together just yet, but Putting it together and just eyeballing it. It looks fine uh, So 
I'm kind of allergic to wiring and nasty mounting of things, so I, I, I have planned for, for actually keeping the server wires inside the fuselage um, so they will be not visible from the outside. But then I, I, uh, I, I do need a way to, to split this in half when I want to gain access into to inside the fuselage and all the its electronics. Uh, so what I'm planning to do is actually to, to cut half of the fuselage here. So the, this part here, sorry, that part here is going to be all in one solid piece and this half is going to be in two pieces. The tail piece I'm actually going to glue together with the uh, servo leads uh, on the inside of course. So this becomes really rigid. And that kind of supports the removable tail as well. It needs to be really, really rigid uh, for that to, to stay solid. Uh, so this is what I've done so far. Just gonna get this apart like that. Right, so what I've done is, and I've also seen this solution online, so this is not my unique idea. Um, I, um, as I'm planning to, be, <laughs> I need to be able to service these these servos at one point, I'm, I'm sure. Um, I'm, I've actually digged in a carbon fiber rod, the same dimension as the standard rod, stabilizing the whole the tail section. Um, so I'm gonna put some extension leads through the upper upper rod, and I'm gonna cut these shorter, just enough so I can get the the and get the servo out from that little uh, mounting point there when it's all glued together as well as having some slack on this side so I can actually pull the uh, soldering points which will be pretty much inside here somewhere uh, pulled back into the into the rod there is some 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 space in between the servos the two servos which meet up quite nicely here where some extra spare uh, Cables can can be if needed if it, if they you know all, with all the soldering and and the shrink tube uh, will be too fat to fit in the hole because it is quite tight. It should work, but we'll see. Right, so that part of the section is going to be glued all solid together, and if I need to to do anything with the wiring to this tail service, I can get to them through through this rod. So the next challenge was to keep the the second half of the, the you know the half that's gonna the quarter of the fuselage which should be detachable at any time um, still solid enough for for operating in the air. Uh, so what I'm planning to do is to use these bolt and nuts running through the fuselage. So from I will screw them in from from this side from the loose. Uh, quarter or whatever you like to call it yeah, the, the part of the fuselage which comes loose and just hold it in with a few of these um, we'll see how that goes um, only trial and error will <laughs> will tell I guess in this place. I put a lot of thought into this um, this is kind of where I got stuck last time I didn't really know how to do this um, so um, um, yeah, I gave it another go, and I think I'm gonna go with this layout. All the small X's here are the where the, the, the bolts are gonna go through, so I'm gonna make a hole there. And if there is an M next to the, to the X, that means I'm gonna um, dig in a, a, a nut in there. And for, I, I do have these hidden nuts, which I use for, for my removable tail, but the threading is different, so I can't use them with these bolts which is annoying, so I'm gonna have to go with normal nuts and see. I just hope that, that, they will, that it will work. So for example, for this one here, I'm gonna do a, drill a hole, just big enough. I might actually do a tubing like that um, to, to make sure that I'm not squeezing the, the EPO too badly when I'm tightening it and then opening it and tightening it again. So I'm gonna just dig a hole through here somewhere and bury that nut in there and um, you know screw the, the bolt into the nut 
when it's hidden. Uh, so that's what what's the M stand for. Um, for example, this one doesn't have an M, so that is a bolt, and not that's going to go straight through. And uh, I'm, they are fairly low profile these bolts, the, the the heads of these bolts, so they should be fine. And the nut itself, well, perhaps I can dig it in slightly from the inside, but the fuselage is not that thick, so for that I can't really bolt something into here. Or bolt, I, I can't dig the nut, nut into the, the fuselage. Perhaps I can, I'm able to, to just glue it enough for, for the bolt to screw into it, not going straight through. We'll see. So I'm planning to use one, two, three, four, five, and six bolts to hold the, fus the, the, the attachable fuselage together. And as you can see, the majority of them have hidden nuts in there, so and the, the main reason is that the fuselage is too thick for these to go straight, straight through. And uh, it might actually turn out better visually as well, digging the nut into the fuselage rather than having it go straight through. We'll, we'll just have to see. Uh, for the front one here, that was a tricky one because I I didn't really want to clog up this this area, but I come to this decision. I'm never gonna put a a camera in the the nose camera mounting point here. Um, I'm gonna keep everything on the um, the wooden FPV gear platform. At least that's how I'm thinking about it right now. I'm planning for it. So I'm gonna dig down a nut in here as well, and I'm gonna have a, a, a bolt go straight through. Um, I'm gonna have two batteries in uh, in Siri, Siri here, so there's gonna be one lying over here, goes up to, to this point pretty much, and there's another one going up to this point here. So that should be fine, I, I wouldn't suffer from having that going straight through there. If that doesn't turn out well, or if I need to put something else on this, in this area or this space, I'll just use sellotape keep the nose together. I guess that's a good enough solution. And in regard to sellotape, that's what I'm going to use for keeping uh, the the motor housing together as well, because I was planning to do a nut and thread, uh, nut and bolt solution here as well, but after serious consideration, I, I think it's an overkill. You don't really need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back together and show you. Oh, come on. There we are. So I'm not going to have the engine sitting in here. I have an extension uh, for for the engine, so it's going to be sitting up here, keeping the thrust angle as original, and that's to be able to um, put bigger, larger props on it with better efficiency than what I can fit with the standard mounting point of the motor. So I guess for for this <laughs> for securing the fuselage here, I'm going to use cello tape. And uh, at least in the beginning, and see how that goes. Well, um, I don't know if I told you, but I did reinforce the nose compartment as well uh, with some extra carbon fiber rods. I actually cut them in and, and, and buried them in the fuselage, so they are 90 degrees twisted from from the original ones. So I should get more you know, stiff, um, stiffest cons construction, um, not giving in as I've seen other people have had problems with, uh, with their big threes. And if I do come down on the nose, perhaps it, it will take a bit more force before breaking. We'll, we'll see. There's not a lot of extra weight, so uh, I think it's a safe precaution. Um, yeah, I think that's it for now. Um, I'm probably going to do the, the big cut and <laughs> divide this half of the fuselage and actually glue that one together so I get that done. And then I'm starting to to to, to make holes for the nuts, for the bolts and dig in the nuts in the, the other part of the fuselage. Well, I'll keep you posted. Um, please uh, 
comment on uh, what do you think about this solution um, yeah and I, I'll see you later have a good one bye